Hey, Richard Bryce here, tennis hacker. In this video, I'm gonna be helping you to meet the ball out in front on your forehand. So if that's something you're struggling with, you're gonna get a lot out of this because what I'm gonna do is start by explaining the ideal contact point because that's a really important piece of the puzzle that you need to understand. From there, we're gonna talk about the preparation and the footwork as you set up for your shot, then talk about the swing itself and some of the things that you might need to think about and ways to potentially break bad habits that you've got. And then at the end, I'm gonna go through some of the limitations and things that might be holding you back and preventing you from doing this even if you try and implement things perfectly. So I hope you find the video helpful. If you do, it'd be great if you give me that thumbs up. And obviously if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, really appreciate it if you could do that as well. So let's start by talking about the ideal contact point relative to our body, because there's some important stuff that you need to understand. Now, generally we're trying to meet the ball out in front of our body and the reason that we want to meet the ball out in front of our body is because we're trying to use our full kinetic chain to create racket head speed at the moment of contact what i mean by that is we're going to be driving through our hips then our torso then our arm and then the racket is going to come through last so we're going to be building up that racket head speed through these body segments and what that allows us to do is it allows us to create racket head speed the racket's moving forwards quickly in that direction but without a lot of effort you know when we put physical effort in and we try and muscle the ball and hit it hard we lose accuracy so we're trying to efficiently build up racket head speed through this sequence of body movements. So for that to happen, we need to meet the ball out in front because if I start my swing too late or the ball's too close to me, I now haven't gone through that sequence of body movements. The ball is too far back. So now this is where people start to kind of snatch and pull off their shots. So ideally, we're gonna be meeting that ball out in front of the body, but it's also important for you to understand that there is no perfect contact point there's going to be things that impact this so if i'm hitting the ball from a little bit higher it's going to be slightly further forwards if i'm hitting a lower ball it's going to be slightly further back relative to my body the grip you use is going to have an impact so if you're using an eastern grip it's going to be a little bit further forwards if you're using a semi-western or a western grip the contact point is going to move back relative to your body and then if you use a straight arm or a bent arm obviously a straight arm is going to be further out a bent arm is gonna be further back relative to your body. So you have to consider all these things within your contact zone. The other thing that you want to appreciate is that you can't always meet the ball out in front. Sometimes the situation just happens on court. So maybe I'm dealing with a wide ball. I just cannot get there in time. I can't meet it out there. And I just have to hit the ball from more alongside my body because that's what the situation demands. Or maybe I'm set up in the perfect position but the ball takes a funny bounce. So now instead of hitting through the ball, now I just have to adapt and hit with a buggy whip from further back and more alongside my body. So all those things are gonna be important as we go through the rest of this video, looking at the preparation and then the things that you can adjust with your swing. The next thing we need to talk about is gonna be your preparation. Now, I've just mentioned a couple of scenarios where you aren't necessarily gonna be able to set up in the optimal position, but the vast majority of the time, it is possible to meet the ball out in front of your body if you're prepared and ready and set up in time. And one of the biggest things that holds most players back and prevents them from meeting the ball out in front on a consistent basis is simply not being prepared and ready in the right position in time. If you're the sort of person where the ball is crossing the net and you you haven't even started to take your racket back it's going to be really challenging if you're the sort of person where the ball is crossing the service line on your side of the court before you start to do the unit turn and take the racket back it's basically going to be impossible for you to meet the ball out in front on a consistent basis because you run out of time and space to be able to use your full kinetic chain so a lot of the time for people the way that you fix the timing issue and the way that you develop the ability to meet the ball out in front is to work on the preparation because our goal is to get in a position where we're able to load off our outside or back leg and drive into the ball starting this kinetic chain sequence so that we can meet the ball out in front so that means that you have to be able to respond quickly to the ball you have to start your unit turn you have to use appropriate footwork so you can get set up in the right position to start this sequence now i'm not going to go into too much detail about how to resolve those problems because i've got a lot of other videos that talk about it I'm gonna place a link up there to one that I highly advise you check out because if preparation is your problem, you're gonna to need to fix that first before the technical adjustments that I'm about to describe are gonna work for you. 
So now that you understand those two key points, let's start to look at the technique and talk about some of the things that you might want to think about and adjust to potentially break any bad habits that you've got to do with your timing. Because a lot of the time it can just be a habituated thing that you're used to starting your swing at a certain time and thinking about things in a certain way and that's what holds you back. So sometimes you need to find ways to break habits. And I'm going to break this down into two parts because in the first part what I want you to think about is using your legs and your hips more. A lot of the time players focus on their arm and the racket and their hand, and it makes sense because obviously we're hitting the ball with a racket and it's attached to our arm. But it's crucial to understand that the initial forces come from the ground, that's how we start our swing. So if we're hitting from a neutral stance, we're thinking about driving through the right leg as the back leg, so the force initially comes from there. If we're hitting from an open stance, we're thinking about using the right leg as an outside leg, but still the force comes from that position. And because the force comes from that part of our body, thinking about that can be a really important part of fixing your timing issue and meeting the ball out in front. Because if you're thinking about using your hands and then really what you need to do is drive through the hip, that can create a delay. So one of the first things I recommend that you do is go out on court and try and think about using your hips more. So as the ball is traveling towards you, You've got to kind of think about starting your swing at some point. Obviously, depending on the type of the ball, it's going to vary. But instead of thinking about your hands, think about your hips and see what happens. Now, when you think about your hips, there's actually two different ways that you can think about it. You can think about the hip itself. So I could think about throwing the hip forwards or rotating from the hip. That's going to be an internal cue because I'm thinking about my own body. That might work for you. But because of the way our brains are wired, potentially focusing on your body might cause you to tighten up. So instead, you might want to think about something external. So maybe imagining you're wearing a belt and you're ripping the belt buckle to the left. So it's still going to cause the same thing to happen. It's still going to get that movement to happen. But now I'm thinking about something that's outside of my body rather than inside of my body. And potentially that might be less likely to cause you to tighten up. But what you're going to try is you're going to go out and you're going to think more about either your hip or ripping the belt buckle to your left but you're basically concentrating more on starting your swing feet and your hip rather than worrying about your arm and that can be a really effective way for a lot of people to break bad habits and to start to meet the ball out in front the next thing i want to talk about when it comes to the technique and the way that you swing is how complicated your stroke is. Now we know that the feet are going to be important but we do have to think about our arms and our shoulders and our hands and our wrists and our racket as well because those are going to be important as well. Now when we talk about the best players on the planet and we we model the way they do things what they're doing is the most biomechanically efficient to way, efficient way to create racket head speed at the moment of contact. It is not the easiest way to meet the ball out in front. So what they do requires tremendous timing and potentially you might be trying to use a technique that's too advanced for your current skill and ability level and ability to time the ball. So it's a key piece of the puzzle that you might need to understand. You know, I know that ideally I want my contact point here. If I'm thinking about like a next gen style forehand, I've got the elbow taken back really high. I've got my racket tip pointing down that end of the court. I'm gonna create this insane racket lag and unbelievable racket head speed at the moment of contact. If you can make that work, fantastic, go for it. But that's really hard to time. So this is more complicated than just doing a unit turn and taking the racket back into this position. So if you're trying this and it doesn't work, maybe you just abbreviate things and you go into this position and then go for your racket lag from there. Potentially for your timing, it might also be too challenging to do this. So what might be right for you is to just do your unit turn and go straight back into this position. So you're going to lose maximum power, you know, going from here to here allows me to generate more power. But if you can't make the timing work, it doesn't matter. Timing's the most critical factor. So if you just need to start in this position and swing through the ball and meet it out in front, you're going to get a much better result than if you were trying to do something that was too complicated and too advanced for your current ability level. 
how far back you take the racket is also going to be in fact an important factor for your timing so if i take the racket back here potentially i can create more power because i've got more room to create it i've got more space to create that racket head speed but i know for me personally if i try and take my racket back into the same position as Djokovic, my timing isn't as good as his surprise surprise i can't make that timing work so for me I shorten my swing, and actually you see this from a lot of top pros as well, having a shorter preparation and take back. Now, this then becomes much easier to time than if I was trying to go from there to there. So often one of the things that you might need to do is make your stroke less complicated instead of more complicated. And then the combination of thinking about driving through the hips to initiate the swing and a less complicated stroke those things together can be really beneficial in terms of your ability to meet the ball out in front. The last thing I want to talk about within this video are some of the limitations and things that might prevent you from having good timing and meeting the ball out in front, even if you try and implement the things that I've talked about in this video. Because in order to have good timing, in order to do what I've just described, you need to have basically two things. One is you need to have a visual system that functions at a sufficiently high level because you need to be able to read where the ball's going. You need to understand the speed and the spin of the ball, how far the ball is away, so that you can predict when it's going to arrive in the contact zone. Because if you don't understand that stuff and you can't predict where the ball is going to be, it's really hard to start your swing at the right time. And then you also need sufficient coordination so that you can use the correct sequence of body movements to use your kinetic chain and you need to be able to adjust the speed of those body movements in relationship to the ball that you're dealing with because sometimes you need to swing more quickly sometimes you need to swing more slowly based on the ball that's coming towards you and if either your visual system or your coordination system or both of them aren't working at a sufficiently high level it's basically going to max out how well you can time the ball. And this is one of the big things that goes on for most players. This is why players practice day in, day out. They take lessons, they buy programs, they watch YouTube videos, but they still aren't necessarily able to fix certain elements of the game. Because if your body can't do something, it can't do it. Now, I'm not saying this to be mean. I'm saying this because it's the reality. And I also want to let you know that it's possible to change this stuff. It's something that I actually had to do within my own game. I grew up playing tennis, which is an advantage. I went into tennis coaching, which is an advantage. But despite that, I wasn't the best player and my game didn't improve all that much because for the longest time, I didn't have the skill to do the things that I was trying to do. But when I learned about the kind of applied neuro stuff, I started to assess my visual system and coordination deficit. I realized there was lots of things going on that were preventing me from having the timing that I needed to hit with you know aggressive modern style strokes so i was able to do it with my own game and this is now what i help other players to do i teach the technique and i teach the tactics because you need to know that stuff but if your body can't do it it can't do it but with the right training you can change it if you'd like to learn more about that I've created a masterclass that's going to teach you about it. I'll place the link up there and I'll place the link down there. And on the masterclass, I'm going to explain this in a little bit more detail, take you through a series of assessments so you can start to look at your vision and coordination and figure out what's going on within your body to identify if there's issues that might be impacting you. And it's going to talk about how you can start to train it. So if that sounds interesting to you, uh, check the link out up there or down in the description. If not, no problem. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you have got a lot out of it. If you've got any questions, uh, leave them down down below. Also, if there's anything that you would like help with, um, leave me a comment. Let me know what you're working on. Potentially, there's a video that I can make to help explain things in a certain way that might be beneficial for you.